Good evening and welcome to Will's webinar, September's Will's webinar, and I'm absolutely delighted this evening to have a man I've just had the pleasure of speaking with for the last 10 minutes, and it feels really like I've known him for, for 10 years, which is the wonderful Michael Heppel. So uh, good evening, Michael. How are you? I am absolutely brilliant, Will. I am delighted that you've asked me to be on this webinar. Let's give some great value. Let's have a chat like we're in the pub with just people listening in to our, our banter. Like, like, like we're in the pub with a G and T, eh? Yes, there you go. Hang on, hang on. I can do that. <laughs> I should explain. I need to explain this. I've arrived at a hotel. I haven't stayed here for a couple of months. And very kindly, as I was setting up to do the webinar, they knocked on the door and they said, Mr. Hebel, we brought you a gin and tonic. And I thought it would be rude not to. I feel like we're with friends. So if you don't mind, I've got my little gin and tonic down there. <laughs> which, is, which is fantastic. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, this, this conversation this evening, like you say, but for the purposes of people that haven't been uh, onto Will's webinar ever before, what we do, everyone, is we keep the uh, the question thread open in our Facebook group, which is the Elite Network Community. So I'm just going to post that link there now. The reason being is that that way we can have all of the questions in the group afterwards, so you can go back and you can review them, and uh, and we can see all of those. So you should see. On the screen here, not that one. Uh, you should see. Hopefully, the, the screen that I'm sharing has changed, and you can sit now see the Facebook post, and uh, and and that's the post where all of the comments will be. So I'm I'm going to be monitoring that throughout this conversation, and any questions you have, then let us know. But if you can also please just let us know that you can hear us all okay, because there'd be nothing worse than Michael and I chatting away for the next. Uh, the next hour or so and then no one hear anything that we're talking about but hopefully it's going to be okay so if you could just let us know and uh, we can get we can get going so um michael i've been a, a big big fan for some time one of my friends i was just explaining earlier recommended me to get this book about six years ago now five six years ago and um hand, hand on my heart this is one of my top five all-time personal development books it's, it's phenomenal the content's phenomenal Thank and you. It's brilliant, I think it's fair to say. So how to be brilliant. So I'm, I'm curious, so, so I'm right saying this was the first book that you... It, it was. I am, I'll, do you want to know a little secret about that book? I'll, I'll give you a secret. It was only published because I told a little lie. And it was just a little lie. But anybody who's, who's watching this will know that when you get a goal in your mind and, and you determine that it's going to happen, Sometimes you have to do a little lie to make it happen. And what, what happened was I, I set a goal that I would have a book published. So that was my big goal, what my name on the front of a book. And um, I was looking at different ways to do it. And instead of writing a book, I recorded an audio program as I, I enjoy talking. So I recorded this audio program. I met a guy called, um, uh, well, I'll not tell you his name because it might drop him in a little bit. But I met a guy who was very high up in a publishing organization. And um, he said, these CDs are great. Do you have a book? And I was like, no, not yet. He said, well, I'm going to introduce you to somebody uh, who's one of our top publishers. And the, pub the company was Pearson, one of the top publishers in the world. And he introduced me to an amazing lady called Rachel Stock. And Rachel, at that time, imagine this. You know when you go into WH Smith's in the UK and in airports and things, and you see that list of all the business books that are there, out of the top 10 business books, six of them were Rachel's. That's how good she is. Right, so I managed to get lunch with this lady. It was super exciting. And we're talking about, you know, this idea for a book. And I want to write a book called How to Be Brilliant and blah, 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 blah. And she was like, look, I think it's a great idea. I think we can do it in probably about 18 months time. And I was like, no, 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 no. It has to be published by the end of the year. And she was like, why? I said, well, because I've set a goal that the book will be published by the end of the year. And she was like, well, it's a shame that you haven't got the manuscript ready because if you had, we've got a, uh, an author who's missed his deadline and you could have taken his slot and that means it would have been published in December. And I looked her straight in the eye and I went, I have written it, which is a complete <laughs> lie. <laughs> I mean, I'd written it in my mind, it was in my head, but I hadn't physically written it. And she was like, oh, I thought you said you hadn't written it. I was like, no, 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 Rachel, it's done. Um, uh, I just, you need just to print out the manuscript and, and she went, okay, can you get it to me for Tuesday next week? And this was Thursday and it was Easter weekend. And I said, yeah, yeah, no problem at all. That's fine. And I remember leaving this lunch 
ringing my wife and saying, Christine, cancel everything this weekend. We're writing a book. And she was like, what the hell has he done this time? <laughs> and, uh, and we got home and we wrote How to Be Brilliant in four days. Wow. And, you know, if my mum and two other people had bought that book, I would have been thrilled because the goal was get a book published. And I've actually thought about anybody buying it. And an interesting thing happened about three weeks after it was published, it ended up in the top 10 uh, business books in the UK. It stayed there for two years and four months. When the revised edition came out, we rewrote it and made it more personal development rather than a business book, it was more personal development book. It went back into the top 10 for another year. That's the version that you've got there. And, um, and a couple of years ago, the 10th anniversary edition came out and my publishers got in touch and they said, listen, we just want to say congratulations. Your book is now available in 28 languages and in 80 countries. And I was like, wow. So that's yeah. a round of applause. I don't know what that is. So that's, that's absolutely don't, don't, no, don't stop. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh, brilliant. So in, in terms of the, the how to brilliant, so I'm just going to get the, the face. So how to be brilliant. You, you say you'd already had the video, uh, the, the audio CDs. That was already a, uh, that, that was already done. Yeah. But personal development obviously wasn't something that was new to you. I'm right in saying that sort of personal development and, and working with people, something for you that started back in 1995. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I rediscovered personal development because I became a fundraiser. And, um, you know, when you're a fundraiser and you are trying to raise money and ask people for large donations and get communities involved with things, that type of stuff, you've kind of got to be pretty much on it yourself. Uh, and one day I met a guy called David Brown. He's the guy who invented the Caterpillar, you know, the, the big split axle trucks that you see in quarries and things like that. And I met David Brown and he gave the charity I was working for uh, a 250,000 pounds, quarter of a million pounds donation, which when you're a fundraiser, that's called a good day's work. <laughs> and, um, so, and I remember I, I had this great meeting with him and he gave us a donation and I started to ask him questions and I'm really into asking people questions like you, Matt, you know, you kind of, you discover things by talking to people, asking them questions, how you did, how did you do that? And after about an hour and a half, two hours of sitting with this amazing man, he stopped and he said, Michael, it's dark. And we, he pointed outside. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I've stayed here too long. He said, before you go, I want to ask you a question. I was like, yeah, yeah, what do you want to know? And that was such a great question. It changed my life. He said, what are you doing right now for your own personal development? And I know why it was a great question, because I didn't actually understand the question. And I said, well, wh what do you mean? He goes, what was the last uh, book that you read? I was like, mm, I don't know. So what was the last course that you went on that you paid for? That's a great question. So what was the last course you went on that you paid for? Not work, you. So I was like, oh, wow, um, you know, I've, uh, I, I haven't done any of that. He said, okay, I'm going to suggest you do two things. One, I want you to read these two books. And the first one was called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I mean, what a starting point. I read Think and Grow Rich as my first personal development book. And my second personal development book that he told me to, to read was called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I mean, two classics to start with. And then he said, invest in yourself. Go and spend a day with somebody who's going to help you to be better. And I start to find these people, you know, like yourself, well, just kind of finding who's out there, who's doing stuff. And I went on loads of courses. I did loads of things. And eventually I got a chance to teach what I knew to young people. And I'd been a youth worker before that. So to teach personal development to young people was great. And then teachers got interested. So I started to teach teachers and, you know, if there's any teachers on the line, apologies for this, but teachers are the hardest people in the world to teach because a lot of them kind of think they already know everything. So I had to learn about the science behind the personal development. And, you know, the right people turn up in your life at the right time. I met a guy called Professor John Macbeth. And John was my mentor and he helped me so much. And he was he became head of educational leadership at Cambridge University. The guy is absolutely incredible. And he taught me this brilliant lesson, which is that it's like an iceberg. You teach the bit at the top of the iceberg, but the knowledge is everything else underneath. And, and I've kept that as kind of one of my real foundations that I'm going to learn as much as I can, but I'm only going to ever teach the little bit at the top. And that gives me the foundations to do what I do. 
Wow. And for, for people that don't know what you do day to day these days, what, what is it? What is it you're getting up to day to day? Well, I, I, t- oh. <laughs> I don't know if you got. So I do I do a couple of things. So um, obviously I enjoy writing. I've written six books now, which is which is great and um, thoroughly enjoy doing that. I work often in-house with organizations. So I do keynote speaking. Uh, I'm doing a keynote in London tomorrow. Today I've been with a client doing work in-house, helping them. And I coach four people a year. So I find somebody who wants to spend 90 days working with me and coach them and help them. Fantastic. Fantastic. So let, let's get into um, how to be brilliant then, because this is change your ways in 90 days. So you just mentioned about 90 days. When I talk about my uh, my coaching program, one of the things I do, I talk about 90 day sprints and I'm working through 90 day sprints, which I do with my clients, which to be honest with you is adopted from your learning of, of six years ago. One of the things that I've introduced six, seven years well, yeah, it was about six years ago. Yeah. And then I've continued to implement since. And now I've used that with, with lots of different people. So those of you that have got the 90 day sprint download, that originally, that idea originally come from Michael. That I've that you're obviously listening to now. So obviously we haven't got the time to go through all of how to be brilliant and yeah. there's, there's a number of key things to it. But if we were to highlight sort of, let, let's say maybe three of the main points of how to be brilliant. Yeah. As far as you're concerned, the, the, the absolutely, absolute fundamentals to be brilliant, what, what are they? So I think number one is study people who've already done it. You know, there's somebody once said to me this great expression. He said, um, success leaves tracks. And I love that because it means that highly successful people have left the clues. So the first part of how to be brilliant, after you've done a, a foundation thing to get a balance in your life, is we do this thing called the characteristics of success. And, and the reason to study characteristics is that they become habits. And what, what I've discovered, and, and you'll know this yourself, well, you've seen it so many times, is that Highly successful people are never one-hit wonders. They never do something once and just rely on that. They do this, these amazing things again and again and again. So those characteristics are things like taking positive action, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. You know, um, it's it's things like um, about you know creating um, a, a state. You know, we, we were talking about Tony Robbins before about the importance of being in the right state rather than at right state. So they're the foundations. The second part of how to be brilliant is understanding that doing a good job is no longer good enough. Uh, I think we all find that so often people use these words, oh, good job. Oh, well done. You did a good job. And then they're dissatisfied because they're not getting the results that they want. And you see this in business and you see this in people's personal lives. You see it in so many areas, in relationships. You know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a good job. I'm, I'm a good mum. I'm a good dad. And they, they're not getting the relationship they want with their family. Good isn't good enough. And that's the kind of the fundamental message from How to Be Brilliant, that doing a good job isn't enough. You've got to be brilliant. If it's important, you have to be brilliant. And, and then we look at what stops you from doing that and remove those limiting beliefs. And, and then there's a few little extra bonus parts in there about getting other people to help you, setting really empowering goals, and then and most importantly at the end about how you do some really, really great stuff with that. Because what we found is that people who really contribute with what they're brilliant at are always the ones that are happiest. They're always the ones that get the best results. Which is, which is so important. And I think one of the things that, uh, you, you mentioned right at the beginning there was about getting balance. So you said sort yeah. of the to, to, is to get balance. So I'm, I'm curious because it's something that I'm I'm really passionate about. So what, what is it you mean about getting balance before you move on to that 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 first stage for the people? Yeah. On because I think it's fair to say that these days with so much going on and so many distractions, it can actually be quite difficult to try and get balance. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Often people talk about, I think it's a bit of a misnomer to have a work-life balance because that implies to me like if work's good, then life isn't going to be very good. Well, why not just get a balance and make everything good? So it's like bringing all those pieces together. And we do a, um, I mean, everybody's seen a wheel of life. It's not a new idea at all, but we put a wheel of life at, at the start. And, I, and my challenge to people it's, is it's not about getting tens. It's about getting an average that you're really happy with. So when I'm coaching somebody, 
if they say to me, oh, look at that, you know, I've got mainly sixes and sevens and I've got a couple of threes and fours. And I say, okay, well, what do you want? Well, I want to be brilliant at that. And I've got a seven now. I said, you'll never, ever be brilliant at that as long as you've got a two and a three in that area there because your mind will constantly go back to that area with a two or a three and whether it's health or relationships or family or money or anything else unless you get all of that wheel out to a kind of a steady six or seven then choose to expand one area to be brilliant like having, a it isn't going to happen. Like having a solid foundation is build up. totally and, and, and you'll see people who, without that foundation, they can get these sprints, these great areas of success, but it doesn't last mm. because the foundation isn't right. And the, the real successful people have got that foundation right, and they yeah. just keep repeating that right. again and again. So just a reminder for everyone, so Vicky's already commented she's, uh, in, in the group. So if you're watching this, then make sure you join the Elite Network community. If you're not already in the group, there's a post which you can see that's on the screen um, with a, a picture of, of Michael with his hands out. With how to be brilliant behind it, and that's the yeah. way that we're using for any questions rather than using the, the demo one. Looks just looks almost identical. Uh, so, so we, we talk, talk about good isn't good enough. So, good isn't good enough. And what what are your sort of top tips in order to go for people that are good right now but want to get to brilliant? So, what is what what's the next process? Well, I think first of all, it has to be important enough. For you to want to be brilliant at it so for example uh we might do an event and i'll ask the question i say what do you want to be brilliant at and some people go everything you can't be brilliant at everything you know it's impossible to be brilliant at everything you've got to choose what you want to be brilliant at you can be good and fantastic at various things but the commitment to being brilliant so i would say first step number one choose what you want to be brilliant at and maybe choose three things it's so probably a good start to have three things. So the three things that I chose that I want to be brilliant at was, first of all, I want to be brilliant in my relationship with my wife. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very, very fortunate that I work with my wife. I write with my wife. She does the production for the events. She runs the business. She co-writes with me. I'm so fortunate. And I want to be brilliant in that relationship. So that's my number one thing. Secondly, I want to be a brilliant dad. So I've got two kids. And I want to be a brilliant dad. And as much as they've kind of grown up a bit now, I still want to be a brilliant dad. So that means I've got one left. So people say, oh, do you want to be a brilliant author? No, because if I was a brilliant author, all I would do 24 hours a day would be think about writing. So I want to be a brilliant presenter. That's what I want to be brilliant at. I'm happy to be a good author, uh, even a fantastic author with, with some things. But being brilliant at it means you would be completely committed to it. So... Being a brilliant presenter was really, really important for me. So then the next stage is to say, okay, well, who do I know who's already a brilliant presenter? Who can I study? Who can I take ideas from? What can I do? So that was why I started to go out and have a look at lots of different people who were brilliant presenters and to find out what they were doing and read lots of books and watch lots of films. This is before kind of where you could just go on and watch a hundred YouTubes. You had to really look for these things. And I used to buy DVDs of you know great people like Jim Rohn and that, that type of person and watch what they did and study stagecraft. And then I decided I wanted to use people as coaches to help me to become better. So rather than booking a, another speaker to help me to be a better speaker, I looked at who are the people who really own a stage, who can work with different audiences every single day, really, really connect with them and make a massive difference. And I thought the best people for doing that, stand-up comedians. So I got a stand-up comedian, a guy called Patrick Kilty, who some of you might have heard of. I got Patrick Kilty to be my coach on how to do presentation stuff. And I originally asked him if he would do that, you know, and, and you know, I, I'd done some work with him, so I was kind of asking him to do some, some work with me. And he went to see me speak at the London Business Forum. And if you've ever been to the London Business Forum, it's an amazing organization. I have great speakers, great events, and I nailed it. You know, when you have, you look, know the, these moments well, you do a presentation and everything that could have gone well went well. The standing ovation at the end, I had a great big head, you know, I'm signing books, all that type of stuff. And then Patrick and Christine and I went out for lunch and I looked at Patrick and I said, so you got any thoughts? He took a notebook out and he'd filled eight pages, eight pages. And I was like, what? And he went, yeah. 
there's a lot of work to do here. And I have to say, initially, my heart sank. But now I am so appreciative because somebody telling you you're really, really good, you're never going to get any better because of that. Somebody saying to you with a bit of tough love, right, here's what you're doing. You pace around too much. Michael, you were chasing the laugh. You're a motivational speaker primarily. Don't chase the laugh. You need to pause longer at those moments. When you stood next to the screen, you need to use that part of the screen for that. You need to tell a story during a journey. You need to do more open and closed loops. When you do an open loop, it means this. When you do a closed loop, it gives that effect. You can do an open loop and a closed loop within <laughs> an open loop and a closed loop. I'm just sat there like information and kind of going, wow. Yeah. And that's it's what makes you more. better. And I'm always curious and I want to know, and I'm sure some of the other, the other people watching want to know. I, I, a lot of people look up to people that they, I look up to them whereas I don't like to think like if I if I think someone's successful in how I perceive success there's, like, there's an element I want to sort of uh, I want to learn from them I don't look up to them I look into them I want to know what it is they're doing and how they're operating so who is so we mentioned Patrick Kilty but who are some people that have inspired you along your journey to to become the person that you've become that's then gone on to inspire millions of people around the world? Oh, what a great question. You see, a lot of the people who have had the biggest impact with me are not the ones who've gone on to inspire other people. You know, they've just kind of, it's been individual. So for instance, when, when I, I got offered a job to be a youth worker by a guy called Alan Percival, and no one will have heard of Alan Percival. He was a field officer for the North of England Boys Brigade. I was 22 years old. Everybody knew me as kind of Mickey Heppel. You know, that daft lad, Mickey Heppel. He's just full of energy. He's just full of stuff. But, you know, I, I, was, a, I was doing volunteer youth work, but never thought I could get paid for it. But Alan saw something in me that other people perhaps didn't see. And he thought, you know, if we can channel this energy, if we can develop Michael, if we can help Michael. And he offered me a job for a year. And that changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. The other massive person for me is my wife. And, you know, it sounds a bit of a kind of a, as a cliche to say these types of things. But I couldn't do what I do without Christine. Because she's also the great leveler. She's the one who, you know, we can do a great presentation. We're on the train on the way home. She's got her notes out and she's gone through the 23 things that we need to improve for next time. And when we get home, she's the boss. You know, when we're on the road, I'm the boss. But when we get home, she's the boss. And it's brilliant because she grounds me and levels me in such a powerful way that I just have to succumb to it. And it's great. And I need it. I really do need it. So, that, I mean, that's a, that's a couple of people who are very close. Um, you know, God, there's, there's so many. Um, you know, when I was kind of getting into personal development and really wanting to uh, understand the world of personal development, um, you know, I, I, like you, I went to see, did all the Tony Robbins stuff. And, you know, some of it was absolutely amazing. It was life-changing. Others, it was the people in the audience. The people in the audience who were absolutely incredible. And I, I would just start conversations with people because I want to know what brought them there. You know, why are you there? What are you doing? Tell me a bit about you. And you would get these great, amazing, inspiring people who were sat in the same row as you. You're kind of thinking, God, the guru's on the stage, but the learning is happening right here, right next to me. So lots, lots of people. And then the other group, which again, and, and, and you'll know this, is when you get a chance to coach people who are already real high performers and they ask you to go and coach them you learn as much from them as the coachee as they're learning from you as the coach agree with that. i think um, i've had the privilege of working with sort of a number of celebrities and um some professional athletes one of my clients is fairly well known richard richard jones one britain's got talent and when you learn the, the understanding of them, it's, it, it's, it's so great to be able to work with people. What they're looking for is that extra couple of percent, but what, like you said, the tip of the iceberg, but getting to understand what's below the water for them is, is really phenomenal. The, the thing I wanted to touch upon um, was, you, you also mentioned some books earlier, so you mentioned sort of two of the, the classics, as, as, they're, uh, as they're, they're quite well known, is um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, 
and uh, How to Win Friends and Influence yeah. People, Daniel, Dale Carnegie, two absolute classics. What would be uh, an, another, let's say, three books that you recommend, obviously, other than your own, of course, not just this, but Flip <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's, 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 what, there's six in total is it six or seven six books he says it's just six a good books, author yeah. i mean he's, he's playing it down he's a phenomenal author. this is fantastic in fact he's a sunday times bestseller with flip it he's, he really is uh being incredibly modest but what would be three books obviously other than your own that you you would say are must reads for people that are interested in personal development Okay, so I would say The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle is just extraordinary. In fact, anything by Eckhart is really, really extraordinary. Mm. You've got to be in the right place at the right time um, to, to get that. And, you know, I, recently I've been spending a lot of time listening to him, him on audio. You're on audio, it's Boy. really, really quite yeah. magical. His voice is so unique. Yeah, it's kind of you got war. You know, you listen uh, to his to his books. Um, there's a lady called Byron Katie. I don't know if you ever come across Byron Katie. Um, and Byron Katie does in really really incredible stuff. And um, you know, she, she for acceptance. You know, if you really want to accept things and accept the world the way that it is. And, and not judge your neighbor. She does a thing called Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet, which is in um, a couple of her books. And um, you, when you do one of those, uh, I mean, my wife, bless her, Christine's just sitting out a shot, you know, she's got a smile on her face because I go on about these Judge Your Neighbor Worksheets all the time. And every so often we'll get annoyed about something. She goes, I'm not, you're going to say, do you want to do a Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet? <laughs> so, um, so yes, yeah, so I think that's, um, that's another one which is, uh, is, is brilliant. Um, and then oh, I'm trying to think of the ones that are the classics that you kind of keep going back to. So Celestine, Christine's just saying a Celestine prophecy, brilliant. Um, the magic of thinking big. Um, um, there's, what was that one, Christine? Jacob the Baker. Yeah, that's a classic one. I mean, there's, God, there's, 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 there's so many. If, um, if we were doing this from my office at home now, behind me, I've just got, books after book after book but maybe about one and a half thousand yeah. personal development and business books in my library and um you know have i read them all mm, no not all of them have i read most of them yeah are there some that i go back to again and again absolutely that's seasons of life jim Rohn. i oh, can't believe i didn't miss that i missed Fantastic. that out incredible um, just interesting this so uh caroline said that she's going to look into boulevard tomorrow Caroline, i've got a pdf that i can send you uh we can get over to you to, to review that Mark, who runs, he's the host of our event in Leeds. So we've got these events that happen in seven cities around the UK. He hosts our Leeds event. He said, uh, so many nuggets already. He's topping up from when he saw you in Liverpool at BEF. I'm not sure. He said, every, every time he oh, hears your voice, he thinks of the Hair Bear Bunch. He told me about this the other <laughs> week when I was speaking. I was, I, was, I was in Leeds at the weekend. And, uh, and, and, he said, uh, and he said, so if you get a chance to see you, then without hesitation, he recommends that, that people... Yeah. It's a bit of a signature thing that we do, this hair bear bunch. And um there is a reason for it. We don't just get people to do a hair bear bunch dance. There's an actual reason for it, but it's, Mark, it's great. Mark so who was the name of the person in Leeds? Yeah. All right, so Mark, listen, I'll, do you want to know? I'll let you into a little another little secret. When we did that event in Liverpool, um, so we had one and a half thousand people there, it was all it was massive, it was high energy. I did that event with a broken back. And if you watch the video back, I knew I had a, something wrong with my back, but I didn't know I'd broken it until I had a scan when I got home. I was running up to people. I was doing chest bumps. I was doing all this stuff. At the weekend afterwards, um, I had the accident just the week before, I had a scan, and there was a great big lump out of one of my vertebrae. <laughs> and I was kind of going, oh, my goodness. I thought, and they said, it, as long as you were being careful over the last few days, I was like, yeah. I've been really careful. Just one other thing before we move on that I want to touch on that you mentioned that for me has been phenomenally valuable. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about our, our events that we have, our live events, is that you never know who's in the room. You literally never know who's in the room. Yeah. It could be your next business partner. It could be your next intimate, uh, next person you're in an intimate relationship with. But more so than anything else is that the, the more I've experienced, the people that are into personal development 
generally have a phenomenal story in. If you get to know these people, there's normally a really good reason why they're looking to upskill themselves. And some of these stories are just so inspirational. So I encourage you, in fact, I, I urge you to really, when you're at our events or any personal development event, is connect with people, find out why they're at the event, what brought them to it, what it is they're looking to get from it, because what that opens up for you sometimes can be life changing, just sort of to elaborate on earlier. 100%. Absolutely 100%. Yeah. Phenomenal people are out there. Great people Phenomenal are out, people there. out there. So we, we've spoken about a few of the people. So what would you say is another, in terms of the whole how to be brilliant model, we've spoken about getting balanced, we've spoken about um, obviously learning and upskilling yourself uh, and, and, and learning from other people, like modeling and, and, and looking into those people. What's another a, a key, yeah. key foundational point of how to be brilliant? Well, one of the one of the things that we promised, because you said, tell me a couple of things that you'll share. And one of the things I said is how to get anybody to be able to help you. And and I discovered this the hard way. So when I thought it was time to start um, my own company, um, I thought you had to be tough. You had to really you had to do everything yourself. You know, because I've read these stories about these great entrepreneurs and they did everything themselves and they and it was so challenging for them and they all had this heartache and pain and all that. So I thought I have to go through that. So I kind of I did. And then um one day I was I was working with some somebody and um they gave me this brilliant piece of advice. And they went, Michael, why why do you insist on trying to do everything yourself when people will, will help you if you ask them in the right way? And I said, I'm always asking people for help, but everyone's too busy. And what I was doing was I was usually hinting for help. So I would say if, if there's any possibility you could or maybe if you could help with that, that would be really nice. Or if you had five minutes, that might be good to have a chat. And, and they gave me this advice. They said you only need to use four words. And the magic words are I need your help. And then I started to think about those words. I did a bit of research and I discovered that that combination of words triggers a part of your brain that automatically makes you want to help people so if you want to get some help from somebody if you say to them those exact words i need your help and then tell them very clearly what it is that you want them to do for you the chance that that person is going to help you increases massively like exponentially it's huge it's absolutely it, it was incredible so i real once i realized this i just started to call people and say i need your help Here's what I would like you to do. And I was really, really clear about it. I always offered them something else in return. So it was never a case of just, it was just give me something. I always avoided those terrible things. Like if you, you must have had this where, where people say, can I buy you a coffee Daily. and pick your brain? <laughs> right. You know, it's just kind of, and I, and I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I coach people and this is, this is my fee for coaching people. And they kind of go, no, no, I just want to buy you a coffee and pick your brain. I'm like, what is it that you do? You know, oh, I, I sell furniture. Great. I just want to pop round and borrow a sofa. I oh, know we can't do that. Well, we're just a chair then. I'll have a chair for six months. And I'll decide whether I want the sofa later on. They're like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Now I sort of get it. So I, I always I always want to be the person who, who wouldn't do that. So I would ask for help in the right way. I need your help. And then I would be very, very clear about what it was. And then I would offer them something in return straight away. And that change things I, I very very quickly more. i think that there is this almost uh particularly with entrepreneurs and a lot of people that will be listening will be entrepreneurs or inspiring entrepreneurs that there's this almost like hero mentality of of needing to to go out and do everything yourself 100 so one of the other things that was yeah. the first time i was probably ever brought into the, the concept of it when i when i read this for the first time was masterminding now one of ironically we today we have we have run a business owner mastermind event down here in essex we bring in speakers for half the day we mastermind for the other half of the day but the way that you spoke about masterminding in this book is in a way that i've never seen it before and that was sort of imagining other people around us if i remember correctly it was like imagine other people around the table and i think even the the examples you used were like people like Richard Branson or people that were dead, and like it, it just didn't matter who they were, but you imagined them and having yeah. them around them. Because we talk about sort of being influenced by people, but for those that aren't familiar with masterminding, 
and and, and that concept. What's 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 that? I mean, a bit, a bit, that's probably slightly different. I mean, I love the idea of mastermind groups, but how often do you get a chance to get together with the people? So you're organizing them, that's great. But for the average person, how do you get, how do you get these people together? And obviously you, you want certain people together as well. And usually what happens is that you bring a, bring a group of people together uh, and you kind of know what you want from it already. You just need that um, verification from somebody. Um, or every so often you get that little gem where somebody goes, have you ever thought about doing this? And it's kind of, oh, wow, that's great. I'm more into that first part, into that bit about getting the verification for perhaps what you what you might need or what you want to learn or do. And so the idea of the, the mastermind group that I think about is to go into a relaxed state, so to get into that alpha-theta state, so your brain is, is very active, but you feel calm, and then imagine people coming towards you who can give you great advice. Now, you might think you know who's going to turn up, but often the people who turn up are not the ones that you were thinking about because your intuition is telling you that these are the people who are going to help you. So, um, and you can maybe have four or five people on your mastermind group. And then if you have a challenge, if you have a, a question that needs to be answered, all you do is just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, relax deeply, visualize your mastermind group, and then ask them the question and listen to what they say back to you. So we used to do a, a two day course. Uh, and on this course, it would create a mastermind group. And then we would talk to people afterwards you know what did you find what sort of information did you get what did you learn and i always remember once there was this lovely guy and he was super enthusiastic and he said i can, I can have a word I can have a word so yeah, yeah what is it? anyway well i've created my mastermind group uh, i've got these amazing people who were sat around i asked them a question but it felt like it was me who was making up the answers i was like yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> when you have just people talking randomly in your head, that's something else, something else completely. And he went, but it's almost like I knew the answer, but I just needed them to tell me, bingo, and that's it. And, and what I'll sometimes do is I can actually be in a meeting, I could be doing a presentation, and I have different people who I'll call up very, very quickly into my mastermind, ask them a question, get the answer very, very quickly, and say that answer. And invariably, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be right because it's coming from your intuition. And I believe your intuition is always right, even when maybe logically, perhaps you think it's wrong. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to, to – because I think it, even when I, I did it way back when, it was just understanding it. I think you just mentioned that part even about the global. It's just me saying it, but like you say, what you're really doing is you're almost yeah. taking your mind to listen to your intuition. It's the Totally, yeah. I mean, intuition is such a powerful thing. I mean, how many times have you been in a situation where your intuition was screaming that you should do something, you did something else, and then later on it was like, I knew it. I knew I should have said no. I knew I should have accepted that. I know I should have gone that way instead of that way. I know I shouldn't have used my <laughs> phone as a sat-nav. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Very true. So Alice has just written a question coming back to when we were talking about the, the four magic words, uh, I need your help. Yeah, I need your help. And she said, what would you typically offer in return? Would it be services that you would offer? Or I'm guessing just to get a bit of context of, of what? Usually I've done a little bit of research and found out something that's important to that person. So if somebody supports a particular charity and there's some reference to that, I'll get in touch with them and I'll say, I need your help. Um, I would like to do this or this or whatever it might be. And in return, what I'd like to do is send X charity, name the charity, um, some copies of my book or to offer them a, a, you know, a half day consultancy or whatever it might be. And some of the people who, I've been able to get in front of by doing that has been huge. But it's kind of finding out what somebody needs, isn't it? If you can tap into that button, it's it's great. Do you always get it right? Probably not. But most times, if you've done a little bit of research, and my goodness, the information that's available on people these days, go into LinkedIn, have a look at what somebody's comment, commenting on. You're going to find out so much about them in minutes. So just before we look at um round, rounding up for the evening so first of all I'm, I'm really really grateful for for you taking the time to speak uh taking time when obviously right in the middle of a work trip you're down in london and taking the time when you could be 
sip, sipping D and Ts with Christine in the bar. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Thank you very much. I forgot, I forgot about my G and T. another one. Now. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's fine. Yeah. If you would say if if there was going to be one other of because how many chapters are there in total? Fourteen, fifteen. Well, you've got an old version. The new, the latest one's got. Oh, about go four That's more not chapters so in there. Four, so I, have the, I have to get the revised version to get yeah. the extra right. chapters. So if we, we've spoken about a few of them, um, some that I brought up, some that you brought up. If there was going to be one other that we would talk about that you feel is is particularly particularly useful as as sort of an injection before people take the time to go and read it, which I encourage you guys to do. I'm going to put the link in the group for people to go and read to go and get. Well, you know what? I think we should do this. Let's let's stop talking about how to be brilliant for a minute because it's great. And I really appreciate the fact you've got to post links to the books and all that type of stuff. I'm not on this webinar to sell books or to sell anything. Right? I'm, I'm on this webinar because my goal when I first started my company was to positively influence a million lives. That, that was the goal. That was what I was about. And we were very lucky that we hit that target a, a few years ago. And now what I want to do is I want to positively influence every person I connect with. And, and right now I believe what we need more than anything is for people to be nice to each other, just to be a bit nicer and just uh, you know, there's a there's a bunch of people who are watching this live now, and I think a lot of people are going to watch the the repeat if they're in your group to be to be able to do that. And wouldn't it be great if all of us, including me and including you, just thought, could I up my niceness for a little bit? Could I just do a little bit of something for somebody? You know, we're walking just from just from the taxi to our hotel. We go past two people who are lying out there in in doorways in London. It's it's not right. We're not going to fix that problem. But seeing somebody who's selling a big issue, even if you don't want to buy it, just to be able to look them in the eye and say, not today, but thanks very much. You're going to be all right tonight. Something like that. I think that would be great if we could just do a bit more of it. I'm guessing the people who are uh, on this webinar are already the people who do that type of stuff. So please tell me to stop teaching you how to suck eggs if you're already doing this type of thing. But let's be nicer to each other a little bit. couldn't agree more. Um, Dara said here that uh, they love your goal. I'm, I'm assuming they're referring to the uh, the, the hundred uh, the, the hundred people. Million, people are now writing. So Caroline said that she loves this. I'm not here to sell my books. Uh, my hero, uh, but we will rush out and buy it anyway because you're a cool dude. And yes, he certainly is a cool dude. He certainly is a cool dude. Uh, who knows your stuff and. Oh, the generosity model is make the pie bigger rather than taking a bigger piece of the pie. Love it, kind of. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very evident to me that you are, and I'm sure Christine as well, are, are, are very much people. This isn't, this isn't just a business for you. This is something that is a genuine, a heartfelt passion to want to make a difference. And obviously, you can do it. Oh, I can't believe that we get paid to do what we do. I mean, it is a, it's a privilege, an absolute privilege. I can't believe it. It's one of those things I pinch myself. Some days, I mean, we, we were up super, super early this morning. We were on the first train out in Newcastle to come down to, to go and spend a day in Hemel Hempstead and, and all that type of stuff. And, and kind of, yeah, could I do with a bit more energy? Yeah, I could. But then I was excited about the fact we're going to come and do this with you tonight. I'm thinking, get in more people to talk to. And it's been great to meet you. It's been lovely to you know hear from the people. If they if they want to get in touch with me at all, then you know, just Google Michael Heppel and it'll Michaelheppel.com will come up and you know we have newsletters and all that gubbins. You can get that there. But you know, it's just been lovely Absolutely. tonight. I've really enjoyed every minute. So, Thank you. Uh, if anybody does have a, a, a last question, then then please feel free to post it. I guess my my last question for you, and I suppose it's maybe one that we should have started with, really. Um, actually, I'm going to fold this into two questions. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to say two. The first thing was, what what was it originally that really sparked the, the passion for you? Yeah. The oh, people passion, what the people the passion. The world and to, there's energy up on this on this part. Do you know? I think it was um, when I was doing youth work and was surrounded by really, really amazing people in the um, 
an organization called the Boys Brigade, which some people go, oh, it's just a single sex organization connected with a church. I don't care. It, it was amazing for me when I was a young person. And, um, and I met people who would give up their time. You know, um, we were at a, a lovely old friend's funeral yesterday, and I was talking to um, the wife of one of the leaders, an amazing guy, Chris McCluskey, he was called, long distance trucker. And he would do long distance truck driving. He would volunteer as a helper on a, as an officer, we used to call them in the boys' brigade, on a Monday night to do um, gym, on a Tuesday night, used to come along and do drill, on a, um, a Friday night was company night, on a Saturday was football, on a Sunday would be um, church. And he would go on to all those things in between doing his stuff. He got two weeks paid holiday in the summer, a year. And one week he would go along to do camp and he would be in the kitchen cooking food, never even saw daylight half the time to go and do that. And as kids, we had no appreciation of the time that these people were giving up. And then later on, when I started to work out what they were doing, I thought, I want to do that. I want to help people. I want to, I want to volunteer. I want to make a difference in my own way. So that was, that was a real big defining moment for me to, to understand that. And then the other one was kind of realizing that I could and that actually I was good enough to do that. And I knew that I could stand on a stage and I could get a message across when I started to teach kids. Um, the program that we were running, the first one I did, we had 12 kids there. Two years later, we had 100 kids every weekend, um, six different centers around the UK, loads of work with teachers. I thought this stuff, it works. It works if you want it to work and if you believe in it and if you, you study it and, and do it with a bit of passion. So they were kind of the, probably the two well, big moments. The was the two questions. Was, was that the what, first one? What's next for the Heppels? I mean, you've already, and I, I, I'm absolutely in awe of, of both of you. I really am. And hopefully in the not-too-distant future, I'll, I'll have the pleasure of meeting you in person. But well, hopefully you're both in person. But we, um, my, I set my goal of I wanted to empower a, billion, a million people. And then one day, I remember it really clear, it was a Friday, and I was just like, I'm playing too small of a game. I need to add some zeros on this. I'm mean, not said a billion people. I'm not naive enough to think that I'm going to impact a billion people directly. But my view is that if I can impact, if I can impact a million people over my lifespan, which is, is possible, and, and I'm, like I say, I'm in awe of the fact that you guys have already done it, but those, those million can impact 10 others, and those 10 can impact 10 others, then all of a sudden, that's one hell of a ripple. And I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book at the moment called The Ripple Effect. And it's one hell of a ripple that we're going to be able to make. And uh, so what's, what's next? Yeah. Ripple. So what's next? So the, the question is, what, what next? So um, currently writing two new books. So um, that's going to be quite exciting. One, but, but they'll be, one will definitely be out next year, probably one the year after that. Um, we are continuing to do keynote presentations. We just love doing the keynotes. That's kind of my real passion because you get close to people, you get a chance to hang out with people. Um, and, but also just spending a little bit more time at home. So it's really nice. We are very, very fortunate. We live in a beautiful part of the world. We live in Northumberland uh, in the north of England, and it's just glorious there. And we've spent a lot of time on the road over the last 20 years. So a bit more Fantastic. time at home, I think, Fantastic. is the plan so, as well. Um, a lot of people, again, just saying um, thank yous, positive, positive influence, everyone I meet. I'm on board from Dara. Carol May said, if everyone wants to be focused on being kind in the world, it'll be a much better place. Vicky is saying this is pure gold. Thank you very much, Michael. We're all going to buy the book. Uh, I use the ripple effect and I do my stepson who recently went to school for some well, fantastic. So one last thing which is uh, going to be standard for us is I'm just going to get a quick selfie with us all live. So quick selfie, quick send, try and get us all in. Okay. So uh, hopefully that's worked and then I'll quickly get one which hopefully will get uh, so it's a nice big smile from Michael. Let's get that down so we can see that. And then uh, there we go. Look at that big wonderful smile well michael once again thank you so much i'm, I'm really really appreciative of uh, uh, really appreciative of your time uh, everyone of course that's been listening thank you very much for for coming and and listening and taking the time out of your evening to to take some absolute gold from michael so once again thank you well thanks so much for asking me and um well, good luck for everything you're doing well how old are you right now if you don't mind me asking Twenty nine. Good grief, man. He's a pup. 
you if you're doing what you're doing at 29 you're going to do your billion people thank Can't you wait very to much see how it happens we should be great bye christine take care bye -bye. Good. All the best, bye -bye. all right be brilliant cheers hello right i think uh, all I right was, was that okay i think that means everyone's gone um if not the people are going to start piping up we, we've not gone i'll stop <laughs> have we gone the screen. i'll uh <laughs> what i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna i'll drop you an email michael <laughs> well, if, if, if people are still there thank you i've really really enjoyed that tonight enjoy the rest of your night everybody and all thanks a lot will Take anything care, we can you. do give bye me bye. a shout Bye.